Okay, so we're gonna, it's been a little while since we went over our unit on quadratics and uh, I, you, you'll probably pick up things fairly quickly, but it has been a while. So our intent was to remind you some of those things before we add some new concepts and some new ways to approach quadratics. So we're gonna spend a, a little bit of time on the first three questions of a little review, just reminding us how to graph a quadratic. So one of the first things that we wanted to do is we wanted to look at our axis of symmetry. Some people will call it a line of symmetry, an LOS. Some people call it an AOS. It doesn't really matter, but it's some kind of a line of symmetry. And remember in these problems, the A value that we refer to here is the value that's sitting in front of the squared term. So in this one, A would be 1. In this one over here, A would be Two, B is the value that's sitting in front of the X term. So B in this case would be six or B in this other case would be negative 16. And C is our last one, which happens to be 11 or 31. And one thing to be aware of is that C is always gonna be our Y intercept. So this number that is sitting at the very, very end is where the graph hits the Y axis. So in this particular first problem, I should know that the graph is going to hit the y-axis at 11. So 0 is going to be 11. I actually think it might be just a hair above the graph, but I might be wrong. But I think it's pretty close. And so we'll kind of see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by using this little formula that allows me to find the axis of symmetry. So the first thing that people need to remember is that it's not just a number, it's x equals that number. And so x equals the opposite of b over 2a. And so since b is 6, opposite b is going to be negative 6. And if I doubled a, I'd have 2. And therefore, my axis of symmetry happens at x equals negative 3. Now, what we'd like you to do to indicate that is to go into here to your graph and find negative one, two, three, and make a dotted line. And that is our line of symmetry or our axis of symmetry. And that means that the graph is going to purposely go up or down, and that's going to be a perfect uh, symmetric line for that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that negative three that we have, and we're going to plug it into the original function. So let's find out what happens if we plug negative 3 in. So we're going to plug in negative 3. We're going to square that. We're going to take 6 times negative 3. And then we're going to add 11. So negative 3 squared is 9. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 and 11. Now buried in here, again, this is a big review. These are things we've already done. But it's helpful to remember that one thing we said is if you do this correctly, these two numbers will always be in a two to one ratio. The second number will be twice as big as the first, and they will be opposite signs. So notice this is a positive nine and a negative 18. If this had been a negative nine, that should have been a positive 18. And I don't want you to just write those down. I want you to think about it and see confirmation that what we're doing makes sense. Well, if we put those together, 9 and 11 make 20, and 20 minus 18 is 2. So when I plugged in negative 3, I got the number 2. So negative 3 gives me the number 1, 2. This value right here, negative 3, comma 2, is going to be my vertex. It's the bottom of that parabola. And then what we know is that as we move to the right, or the left from that vertex, notice I'm going up this way and down this way, um, we have a nice little pattern that said when we deal with a quadratic, we need to go up whatever A is, which in this case was 1, we're going to multiply it by 1, 3, 5. So since A is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, etc. So if we go up 1 from both sides, we go up three from both sides. So that's gonna be up one, two, three. That's gonna be the number six. And then if we go up five, we're gonna hit 11, which again, sort of confirms that we did things okay because we already predicted that we would hit that number 11. 
And then we play connect the dots with a nice shape that is not a V, but a nice pretty U, okay? So now that we've done one of them, we'll go a little quicker through the second one. We know that opposite B, opposite B over 2A would be 32 over 4, which gives me 8. I need to be a little bit careful. Opposite B, why did I do that? Opposite B is 16. I don't know what I was thinking there. Over 2A, which is 4, is going to give me 4. And so my line of symmetry is going to happen at x equals 4. So I think I'm going to come down here to x equals 4 and put a dotted line. That's going to be my folding line of symmetry. And I want to plug that 4 in. Okay. Now let's see. 4 squared, remember I'm going to do exponents first. 16 times 2 is 32. 16 times 4 is 64, and again, you're going to notice that this one is twice as big and the opposite sign, and so putting this all together, 32 minus 64 is negative 32, and negative 32 plus 31 is negative 1, so my vertex is at positive 4, negative 1, that's sitting right here, there's my vertex. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up using my 1, 3, 5 pattern. But my 1, 3, 5 pattern is going to be multiplied by A, which is 2. That means I'm going to go up 2. Then I'm going to go up 6. So if I go up 6, I'm going to hit 7. If I go up 2 again, I'm going to hit 10, right? 2, 6, 10. So really, it's 2, 6, 10, 14, because I could have a 7 there as well. And so as I go up 2, and then I go up 6, and then I go up 10, these are the values that I should see as I recede away from that vertex. So let's see. I go up 2, then I go up 6, which is going to be right up here at 7. Now, I've already run out of room on this thing to, to do anything more. You'll notice it's a very steep graph because a value is bigger than 1. But we could do one more thing. And I did mention it that, because notice if I went up one more time, 14, I'd hit 31, which means if I went here, I'd be at 31. And see, that validates that what I was doing was correctly because we said that our y-intercept right here is the value where zero happens. And notice that in that case, see how zero gave me 11 here and zero gave me 31 here. That's very, very helpful to make sure that our math is correct. And we're gonna go ahead and do the very last one, number three, because it really does line up with everything we've done. The difference here in this one is that the graph is gonna open down because our a value is negative. So we'll start with the same process, opposite b over 2a, which gives me 2. So my line of symmetry is going to happen at x equals 2. I'm going to plug that 2 in, and I'm going to plug it in very, very carefully. Everywhere where there was an x, I replaced it with a parenthesis and put a 2 in those holes. Notice 8 times 2 is 16, but 2 squared is 4. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Again, notice the nice little 2 to 1 ratio. These add up to negative 1. Just looking at my notes and making sure I don't make any mistakes on there. So when I plugged in positive 2, I got negative 1. That's right here. Remember, here's my line of symmetry at x equals positive 2. So notice I made a little line at x equals 2. I made a vertex at 2 comma negative 1. But this time, my 1, 3, 5 pattern is going to get multiplied by negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2, negative 6, negative 10. I mean, if we wanted to, we could keep going, go negative 14. So if I go down 2... Then I go down 6. Uh, if I go down 6 from negative 3, I'm going to get to negative 9. Okay, what do you know? 
There it is. Zero gives me negative nine. There it is. There's my C value. And so I went down six. The next stop would be down 10. And that would happen at five and negative one. But we're not going to have room on that on our graph anyway, so it's all right. So we're going to do this. We went down two. Then we went down six, which is way down here. Notice the symmetry. It goes over two, back two, over one, back one. And that is a quick review of how we graph quadratics. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Remembering what we did several months ago, I will see you back for another page later. Okay, bye-bye.